I guess. So I'm going to kind of give you a Whitney version of chapter 20, part one, um, kind of how I used to when we were all online, which is crazy. So I might have a little PTSD going on. All right. So hopefully you guys went to Wednesday. You saw Jen's demos and things that she maybe had planned. Um, I gave her my notes to lecture from. So what I do today might actually look a lot similar to what she did, um, but I might say things a little bit differently. Um, I know she is absolutely amazing at what she does, so I was worried at all. Um, but if those of you guys are still a little struggling, this might help. All right, so we're going on to chapter 20. Chapter 19 was due on Wednesday. And now we're doing that first part of 20 before you have your first exam. So reminder, your first exam is chapter 18, chapter 19, and then the first part of chapter 20. So what I cover today. And you will only be tested on sections that I um, taught in class. So if there were sections that I skipped or didn't cover, you are not responsible for that knowledge for the exam. Great. And then I will return on campus with you on Monday. What is that? I don't know. I'm counting for me. <laughs> and we'll do the review, which I will post on Canvas for you guys. So that if it's not up already, probably I'll probably put it up after this. So it's probably up already. You guys can print it out or you can work on it like on a separate sheet from Canvas, however you want to do it. The review and review day is the you do, you get participation. And then the first exam is a week from Wednesday. Okay. And we take the entire class time to do the exam. Wonderful. Okay. So let's get into it. Chapter 20. Go, 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 go. Share screen. Awesome. All right. So chapter 20, electric circuits. Um, I did want to put your homework problems on here. So chapter 20, and this is really like part A, homework problems are 3, 9, 13, and 23. And this is due on Monday the what would that be the 11th the 9 11 all right okay so review of what we've done just to remind you kind of that general flow of what we're supposed to be learning right so so far we've learned that every charge positive or my or negative has an E field, right? So every charge has an E field, okay? When those E fields interact, you get electrostatic forces, okay? Now we learned from, so that was chapter 18. In chapter 19, we kind of looked at the same thing with a different lens, kind of like when we went from forces to energy in 125, we can analyze motion for motion sake in the terms of F equals your ma, where the ma part is the motion part, right? Or we can kind of switch the filter and look at things in terms of energy. So instead of looking at exactly what's happening in between, if I know something's here, something here, then I can account for energy, use conservation of energy to solve for something, right? But we need to have two instances of object energy. So now we're gonna flip this the filter on these charges and we're gonna see that, okay, well, if it has an E field now, it also has a potential. So every charge has an E field, but it also has its own potential, 
okay, which means there could be a potential gradient, which means if I put another charge in it or some other way of creating more of a potential gradient, um, then we could have potential energy, which means movement as well. So both ends of the train end in I have something there that it could move kind of thing. So F equals your ma, force causes change in motion. PEE -E is the potential energy that it has or could have at some point, um, whether it's moving or not, but we could turn it into movement because conservation of energy. Okay, so that's what you know already. Now, the story is so far though, that we have not actually moved the charges kind of like, I know we did the examples of where there was a moving charge, but we looked at the beginning and end point, right? We haven't actually looked at a charge moving and really accounted for the entire movement of the charge. And we've done that on purpose because once we get a charge or an E field that is moving through space, that E field is then changing, which other stuff starts popping up that we need to account for, okay? So your story is so far that we are looking at charges. We're trying to figure out what E fields are. Why do fields or why do forces um, interact with other? Um, why do charges interact with other charges? Like, why does a charge want to move when it's getting close? So these are all the answers to those questions. But we actually haven't moved a charge yet. Okay. So then, eighteen and nineteen. Those. That's the basis. Now we're going to kind of like zoom out a little bit and look at a big macro picture of when charge moves. Okay, and then we will zoom back in and see all these stuff falling out because charge is moving. But right now we're going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to look at this macro picture of a charge moving through a wire specifically, and that's how we get electric circuits. Okay, so now you know where we've been, where we're going. Let's start this chapter stuff. Okay, so section number one, 20.1 is electromotive force and current. Okay, so electromotive force and current. Okay, so before we go into exactly what each of these are, we are also going to discover what they are in picture form as well. So when we deal with circuits, you deal with a few little pictures. So we have to figure out what they are vocab wise and we have to know what they or how we represent them in something called a circuit diagram, okay? All right, so the first thing that we know in circuits that logically you know will be there is something called a battery. Okay, now what a battery is, is something that creates a potential difference across a circuit. Okay, so, all right, let's just write this down. And, and I know I didn't explain the drawing while I drew it, but just, just draw it in our notes and I'll explain everything. All right, so battery is an electric potential difference. Okay. That is created between you can say these these two parallel plates, but or you could just say terminals. Okay, now remember what electric potential difference means. So electric potential is your voltage. Okay, so an electric potential is those lines that we drew in equal potential surfaces that denoted how much energy the charge had at that specific point. Okay, so if I so if I'm translating that into a battery, a battery just creates that potential difference across something so that a charge has a potential to move. So a charge could have potential energy per charge that's in that system 
to move. Okay, so a battery is something that creates a potential difference across a circuit or across the terminals, however you want to write. Okay, and so if these two are my terminals, right, this, this picture that I drew denotes a battery in an electric circuit drawing. The long side is always the positive terminal and the little side is always the negative terminal. Okay, so think back to your lab when you had to plug in your, your wires into the red and the black, right? That positive terminal, you plug in the wire into that positive terminal is that wire right there. And then you plug in that wire into the black or the calm or whatever you want to call it, the ground, um, is that terminal right there. Okay. Um, all right, so let's define this electromotive, um, electromotive force real quick. So electromotive force which gets an abbreviated as EMF Okay, is the maximum potential difference of a certain battery. Okay, so that's still going to be units and volts. So electromotive force is just the fancy term for the voltage or the maximum voltage across the battery. Now, the, it, in practice, this is, we don't, re, like, we're going to have one voltage coming out of your, your power supply, right? Or one potential difference that we're going to create. Um, this is more for... Um, like theory equations, um, plug and chug stuff. Like EMF is just the maximum voltage on a battery that it can have. Now, realistically, it's gonna probably have less than this in practice, right? Just for other different reasons. So EMF is kind of that just like standard of that battery, um, but it's still the, a potential difference. There's nothing new that from or new in terms of um, illustrations or anything like that. Okay, so we got a battery. Next thing I want to talk about is a current. Okay, and then I'm going to also put slash wires. Okay, so I have a battery. I'm going to connect that current and wires to that battery in order to do something. So current and wires, or wires, excuse me, are just straight lines in the diagrams. So here's a wire in your diagram. So wherever you see straight lines, it's just a wire in the circuit. Now, if I blow that wire up, okay, so... Now I've got like this big fat wire here. Okay. Inside the wire, if I create a potential difference across the circuit, so let's say I have my positive terminal connected on this side, and then it loops back around, and then it's connected to my negative terminal over here, right? So I've created a potential difference across a wire that has charges naturally in it because it has atoms in it, right? So what are the atoms gonna wanna do? Well, the electrons are further and able to move easier than the protons are. So all my electrons are going to want to move towards the positive charge. All right, so here's my little electrons, right? So I have to create a potential difference, right? Which is, this is the battery here, over here. Okay, so I have to 
put a positive on one side and a negative on the other, create a potential difference across the circuit in order for these electrons to move or charges to move, right? So going back to what you already learned, I have to have a potential difference in order to have potential energy to move, okay? All right, so that's what a battery does. It creates that potential difference. So then when connected to a wire that has charges already in it, we can move those charges. Okay, well, the flow of the charge is called electric current. All right, so electric current is just moving charge. Okay, so electric current. The variable for current is I, and the units will be defined as amperes or amps. So amperes or amps. Okay, now what is an ampere or an amp? So the define electric current in, char, in, char, uh, in terms of an equation. So I is equal to, well, it's the flow of charge. So how much charge per unit time, right? The same thing is that speed is the changing rate of distance, right? So electric current is the changing rate of charge. So how much charge I have in a certain amount of time. That's what amperes at is. So an amp is then a coulomb per second. Okay, so the amount of charge, or excuse me, the, the current that exists in wires that we take measurements of and stuff, it is a measurement of how much charge passes through a point every time in, in a certain time interval, okay? Now, here's the tricky part. The direction of charge, so the direction of I is the opposite flow of electrons. I'll put that in star there. So the direction of I is opposite of the flow of electrons. I know, I know, I know. When things start, when they start defining things in history before they actually realize what's going on and things, stuff like this happens, but it won't mess you up too bad. Okay, so now we have two components of a circuit. We have a battery that creates a potential difference so that if there's charges in there, excuse me, which there are naturally in a wire, the, the charges will move, okay? And, and then we've also defined the current is the change in charge or how much charge passes in a certain, with respect to time. Okay, so let's do an example and use these. All right, example. The battery pack of a pocket calculator has a voltage of three volts and delivers
a current of 0 0.17 milliamps. Oh, period. In one hour of operation, comma, let me find two things. A, how much charge flows in the circuit and B, how much energy does the battery deliver to the calculator. All right, so how much does it deliver to the circuit that's in the calculator? All right, so there's our problem. The battery pack of a pocket calculator has a voltage of three volts, delivers a current of that. In one hour of operation, how much charge flows and how much energy does the battery deliver to the circuit? Okay, so there's not really a picture here because, well, because right now we don't know how to draw circuits. <laughs> so let's just list our knowns. Okay, what do I know? So the first thing, first piece of information is that I have a voltage of three volts. So V equals three volts, voltage potential, potential, all that, same thing, okay? It delivers a current of 0.7 milliamps, so that's new. So remember, current is I, 0.17 milliamps, which is, is equal to 0.17 times 10 to the negative three amps. Okay, so milli is negative times 10 to the negative three <clears throat> in one hour of operation. So it gave us a time interval. So the time interval is one hour, but that is not SA units, right? So our SA units for time is seconds. So you have to go how many seconds are an hour? Well, I know 60 are in a minute and then there's 60 minutes in an hour. So I get 3,600 seconds in one hour. Awesome. All right. So A wants to know how much charge flows through the current, the circuit. So I'm looking for how much charge. So what was the change in charge that moved through the circuit in that hour? Okay. All right, so I'm given some information here. I may not need all of it, but I do know the only equation that I have in terms of time and charge is that I equals delta Q over change in time. So if I know the current and I know the amount of time that passed that I accounted, that I wanna account for all these charges, then I can find how much charge. Multiply both sides by delta T. So I delta T is equal to how much charge passes. So I was 1 point, or 0 0.17 times 10 to the negative three amps times 3,600 seconds. Um, I do that, I get that the delta Q is 0 0.1, 0 0.61 coulombs. Okay, the second part is how much energy does the battery deliver to the circuit? Well, in terms of charges, the only batter or the only energy that we've learned is PEE, right? And that equation is Q times V, 
okay, well, I know Q now how much charge happened in that time. So if I know how much charge and how much voltage the potential difference was across the circuit, which was three volts, then I know how much potential energy was delivered to, or how much energy was delivered to that circuit in that time. So plug that in and you get 1.8. Okay, so there's your first problem that has to do with circuits. And really what we just did is just to find what moving charge was, which is a current. And if current is moving charge, then it makes sense that the definition of current is how much charge is moving with respect to time. Okay. All right. 20.2. Oh, law. <laughs> I don't know why, but I always picture like, almost like a Grendel type old older man, and he's just like, oh, law. So now it's like stuck in your head now. You are welcome. All right, so now we're going to talk about Ohm's law. Well, Ohm's law kind of is based on what's called a resistance. So let's define that real quick. All right, so resistance slash a resistor, okay, which we are going to give the variable capital R. Is the ratio of voltage. applied across a piece of material to the current I through the material. All right, so a resistance is telling us it's giving information about a certain material or item that's in a circuit. So a resistor is a separate component than battery or wires. A resistor is an actual thing that we put in a circuit. Now, the, re the measurement of the resistance is unique to that component. So each component is going to have a different resistance. And what resistance is, is the ratio of how much power, not power, how much potential energy was placed on that circuit so how much voltage potential was placed on that circuit in relation to how much current actually got through that component. Okay, so it is a ratio of how much voltage was available, you can think of it that way, um, with what actually made it through. Um, the, what, which made, or from what, a ratio between the voltage available with the current that actually made it through the resistor. Okay, so our resistor in terms of picture is always a little squiggly line. Nope, I want to, I think so. I'm trying, no, here, I'll just do this. You can do that too, if you wanna do a straight line and then just squiggly a line over. All right, so here's my resistor when I draw it in a circuit. Okay, and a resistor by definition was V over I, right? So the voltage per um, current. So the potential difference be across a, so R is a measurement of the potential voltage. I'm gonna highlight these words across 
R with the current through R. Okay, so those are very powerful words because number one, they tell you the nature of each voltage and current individually, but then it also is going to help you measure voltage and current when we do it in lab, okay? So a voltage is always happening across something. So we, we think of that power supply. You have to have a positive and a negative side to have a potential difference across something, right? And it needs to be across a wire or a component so that the charges move through that component. Okay, so voltage is across, current is through, all right? Now the resistor is the component in which it's gonna utilize this, this, this current for something, okay? It could be anything, all right? All right, so going back to, um, well, no. I'll give you Ohm's law now. So Ohm's law is just a rework of that definition. So Ohm's law is just solving that equation for V. So Ohm's law is equal is V equals I times R. Just kind of like your new F equals your ma for 126, just a very simple thing that you're gonna need to do over and over and over and over again. Okay, so Ohm's law is the voltage, relates the voltage and the current through a particular resistor. Now, one thing to note here, there is only one R in this equation. Just like in F equals your ma or F equals ma, there was only one M in that particular equation. So you had to utilize F equals your ma in one mass at a time. So if you ever had two masses, then you would do F equals your ma analysis on those masses individually. Same thing for um, Ohm's law, V equals IR. You notice there's only one R there. So you only are going to be able to calculate V equals IR for every, every R separately. Okay, so if I have multiple resistors in a circuit, which you will do, you can utilize Ohm's law on all of them individually. Okay, or you, you have to. Now, there is going to be a way to condense resistors. So kind of sum, may, sum, like sum up the resistors in a circuit so that you can kind of get an equivalent circuit is what it's called. So if I had like 10 resistors and one power supply, I will have a method that I could dumb that circuit down to one resistor and one power supply so I could use Ohm's law on the entire thing or get information about the entire circuit that way. Okay, but we will get there. Ohm's law right now is you are you have a resistor, you have the current that is going through that resistor, and you're getting the voltage that is across that resistor. Okay. All right. So if I'm utilize Ohm's law over here to my picture, the R is the R. So tell me a value, and I'll give you units in a second. The current that I would be finding in that is the current going through that resistor. Okay. And the voltage across it would be the, the voltage across that particular resistor. Now, let's see if we can figure out what positive and what negative side this on the resistor. So current is the opposite direction of the charge of an electron. So how I do it in my brain is I always, electrons are just easier for me. I don't know why. So an electron's always going to flow from the, from the negative to the positive. So do the opposite. So if I go from negative to positive, then the opposite would be from positive to negative. So current will always flow from the positive to the negative, which is what I drew up there. You see that, that red right, right there from positive to negative. Okay, so current always flows from the positive to negative. So this right here is my potential difference. So my V. Okay, so at every resistor, you have all three components of Ohm's law. So one resistor at a time. Okay, 
So resistance is not volts per coulomb or volts per amp, which it could be, but volts per amp is going, we're going to get a new unit. Um, technically, this would be over here somewhere, but do it over here. So the units of resistor uh, is ohms. Oh, look at that, ohms law, right? And we abbreviate that with the Greek letter omega. All right, so your ohms then could be, let's say like five ohms. Your current could be one amp. So that one times five, so then your volts across that would be five. Okay, awesome. We have all the components now. Okay, so brought together without getting too crazy, a really simple circuit could look like this. So I have a power supply, so I have a potential difference. I have some wires and then I have one resistor. So my potential difference plus minus. So I will always label my total voltage of the circuit. So you could say this is like 10 volts over here would be my voltage supply. So when your power supply is hooked to, just hooked to something in the lab, you're increasing your voltage to read 10 volts. Boom, that's the voltage potential that you put across the, the circuit. Okay, I have some resistor attached. So let's say that's a light bulb, some kind of component that is going to utilize that current for something. Okay, now some analogies that help my brain when we're dealing with um, analyzing these things. It, it's, it's really simple what we're going to do now. But once we get to the second part of chapter 20, analogies kind of help a lot. Um, is when I think of a power supply, I kind of think of a water pump. Um, the wires are your tubing or your pipes. And then the resistor is just like some stuff in the pipes that might inhibit current somehow, um, utilize current, whatever. Okay. So like I think of rocks and pipes for some reason. Okay. So if that's the truth, so I, I have 10 volts. So I'm going, and then I'm going to have my current coming out of the positive my current is going to flow. So this current, let's just say is one amp. Why not make it easy, make the calculations easy. So this current is gonna flat throw through the positive, come through the wire, come over here, go through R. So my eye is gonna come through R right here, turn around and then come back to the negative terminal. So it didn't do anything and it won't for this first exam before it gets to the one R that's in my circuit. Okay, this first exam, this is the most complicated circuit you'll see, <laughs> right? But it didn't do anything. So all the I that came out of the power supply is going to see this resistor, right? I didn't have any pipes going other, other directions or anything like that. All the I that got pumped out of the pipe or pumped out of the water pump through this pipe all went through R. It didn't have another option to go anywhere else. Okay, so the current at R is one amp going through R, okay? And then, so, and then there's no other use of power supply. So all the potential difference is going to go across R and you'll see that um, better later, but it will see this whole entire potential difference of 10 volts. So that's your V, your voltage at R. So if I have I and V, I can find R because I have Ohm's law. So V equals I R. So R is equal to V divided by I, which in this case would just be 10 volts divided by one amp, which is 10 ohms. Okay, not too bad. Just using one little tiny of equation for that. But now you know how to draw the picture of a circuit as well.
Alrighty. Well, I kind of just did the example, same thing as an example there. So we can kind of move on from there. Okay, so that is the biggest chunk of what you're going to see on the exam. Okay, so Ohm's Law is kind of the the big player. You might you might have um, something that um, from 20.1 to maybe one little question. Maybe I'm not. Okay, so 20 point, oh, it's black. 20 point three is definitely a like just a plug and chug section. Okay. Sometimes I skip it, sometimes I don't. It's but they're just plug and chug um, problems. They're they're useful in the real world, definitely. Um, but and it kind of helps with like materials and stuff um, and understanding resistance. But after you do the problems from twenty point three, or we move on to chapter or the rest of chapter twenty, you won't see this again. Like this isn't something that we're gonna have to take with us. Okay, so. 20.3 resistance and resistivity is basically a zoomed in picture of what is resistance and what technically changes resistance. So properties of resistance. Okay. Um, so let's go back to that analogy that I gave you. So if we visualize Visualize current like water. Then resistance depends on the length and width and then let's put length and width of the component and I'm saying component is like a catch-all for whatever you're going to put in a circuit right now that is going to utilize the current okay so light bulb like an actual resistor this is going to be different from other things that could be in circuits like LEDs or um diode, other forms of diodes that are not light emitting, um, capacitors, other components, um, but we're not going to be doing any of those. So right now, these, this can be like a catch-all for all components. Okay. All right. So a zoomed in picture of resistance is going to depend on something that's called rho times L over A. I'm going to define all these. But again, this is a very zoomed in form of resistor resistance. You're gonna see this once in this section and then you won't see it again, okay? Okay, so what are these individually? Okay, so L is the length of the wire. Okay, and sorry, go back to that definition real quick. So if we visualize current as water, Resistance depends on the length and the width of the component or wire, because technically wire could also have um, a resistance in it. Okay, so this is our catch-all for the wire too. So we're zooming in and we're gonna see the resistance of all the wire as well, or that component. Okay, so length of the wire, the com component, however you want. This, this in particular equation, we're gonna just look at wire though for a second. Um, where A is your cross-sectional area of the wire. So if I have, here's my wire. Okay, here's my L, the length of my wire. My cross-sectional area would be this surface area here. So probably a circle, so pi r squared as my cross-sectional area. All right, so then let's bring this row thing back. So this row is defined as the resistivity
okay? This is gonna depend on the material. All right, and the units of resistivity is ohms times meters because that's what it needs to be to in order to cancel out and get ohms, yes. Um, but it depends on the material. So it basically tells you the property of the material, how much resistance it has um, given the length. Okay, ohms per meter, great. All right, well, there's your basic information about if I wanted to find the resistance in a wire that I was using, right? On top of whatever the component resistance was that I knew of, I could find with Ohm's law, okay? But resistivity also depends on temperature. Resistivity or resistance. Depends on temperature. Okay, so we have some plug and chub equations. Um, I'm gonna write them down first because there's I'm not gonna I'm not gonna de um, derive these ones. Again, I'm gonna write them down first and I'll explain them. Probably look like chem equations a little bit. <laughs> All right, so it depends on temp. So these are our equations that tells us about resistivity boop, or resistance, boop, okay? Given the temperature of the, excuse me, of the wire. All right, now they were the same equation. So if I took the first equation and I actually plugged in like the, this equation that I already gave you up here in terms of rho, then you get the second equation. So they're the same equation, um, just put in terms of whatever you need um, as far as resistivity or resistance. Resistivity, remember, is ohms times meters and resistance is just ohms, okay? All right, so what are these? What are all these? Okay, so the rho you know is resistivity. So rho naught, all right, is going to be your initial. Um, resistivity at T naught, which is your initial temperature. Okay, so I just defined both of those. Okay, so T naught. And so then rho, just plain rho would be the resistivity that you're trying to find at given T. So rho would be just your final, you'd say final, or you could say like current or whatever you're looking for. So final or current resistivity. at T, final temperature. Awesome, okay, and so then these alphas then are with something called your temp, your temperature coefficient. Of resistivity. Okay, so all this said and done, these the one of the reasons why sometimes I'll skip this section, but I mean, we can do it. It's easier problems for you to do, is these problems are going to be plug and chug problems. You're just gonna be given an initial and um, initial temperature or a final temperature and you need to find it like you're, these are plug and chug problems. 
there's no critical thinking that is involved in these problems usually. Um, these are the problems that like, oh, I learned an equation and I'm just gonna utilize it even if I have no idea what this equation came from because Whitney didn't tell me because I can't derive it because we don't do calculus in this class. So they're very much like, here's an equation, just use it kind of, kind of questions, okay? Um, which is kind of nice sometimes. You gotta have those too. I, I make your brain work a lot. I understand that. Okay, last section. Do, 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 do. Perfect. Oh, let me give you some units on here. Sorry, guys. Okay, so the units of temperature um, are gonna be in, so T units are going to be in degrees Celsius. So alpha units are is one over degree Celsius. Okay, which makes sense. They have to cancel out. Now, for some reason, you're given the alpha units and one over Kelvin and your temperature is Kelvin. That equation still works, or you can you can put everything um, in terms of Celsius if you want. Okay, and if you need the um, equations to convert any of that, I will give them to you on the exam if they're not on your toolbox. Okay. All right, now let's move on. Last section that will be on your exam is 20.4. It is another plug and chug thing, and it is electric power. Awa. Ah, All right, power, let's do a little bit of writing. So a function of current in an electric circuit is to transfer energy from a source, so the battery, to an electrical design, an electrical device. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the point of a circuit. I'm sorry for the weird indent there. So the function of a circuit is a function of current is to, or a function of circuit really is to take current, make current as like this little power transport to transport energy from this power supply to whatever component you want to utilize, okay? Um, so basically we have to somehow transmit power. Okay, and power is in the movement of the circuit or the current. All right, so how much, so a unit of this power, so a measurement of this power comes from energy. So how much energy is used per unit time is the definition of power. Okay, which we are gonna give the variable big P. So power is how much energy, sorry, that looks like a lowercase p for where I put the equation side. Power is how much energy so a change in energy in a certain amount of time. Okay, well, what type of energy can a charge have or create? Okay, well, that's PEE. So that'd be your change in PEE over a certain amount of time, right? Now that definition so energy over time also gives us the units 
So the units of power are joules per second, which is watts, or W. OK, so a watt is how much joules per second. Now, you might be um, very, depending if you pay the bills in your house, you might be familiar with the units watts per second or watts per hour, technically, or kilowatts per hour. Um, and that is the measurement that you receive on your electrical bill. So how power is changing with respect to time. So basically like your acceleration of your energy use of um, your electrical energy is what they are tracking to bill you um, for your energy use. Okay. So that's where the watts are. It's power. So if watts is joules per second and you're being billed for watts per second, then you are getting billed for how your joules, how your energy usage is accelerating or changing with respect to time. Okay, so back to the definition. So if power is energy over time, I have the change in electric potential energy over time. So then if I plug this in, that is Q times V over change in time. I'm just gonna get different definitions of power here that you can use in different times. This thing here, Q over T though, is something that you just learned and that is current. So I can also write it, uh, I can also write the power is the same thing as current times V. So here's one equation for power. There's another equation for power. Awesome. I also know that V equals I times R. So if I plug that in, I times R, I get another equation for power. Awesome. And even further, I could have put in what the I is. So I also know that I is equal to, in terms of Ohm's law, V over R. So if I went that route, this would be equal to V over R times V. So I would get V squared over R as my power as well. So just more equations for power these are the two that you will probably utilize the most. You might utilize this one depending on the information that you're given to solve for power. But the equations or the problems for the power has, you're utilizing or you're trying to find power or utilizing those equations are, again, plug and check. Okay, um, so at this point, what I would do is I would, if you haven't already, start the homework so that you can prove to yourself that these are mostly simple plug and check problems. Um, I did write the homework on top for you guys. I can scroll back for that real quick. And there it is. Your homework, so 3, 9, 13, and 23. Remember, these are due on Monday um, when I will see you again. Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you had an awesome week, and I'll see you on Monday and with your homework due and probably some questions. I will be there in office hours in MS 122 if you need me. Okay, 